Hi, I'm Ellen Horn, and I'm going to talk to you about Stockholm Syndrome. In her memoir titled A Stolen Life, J.C. Lee Dugard recounts over 18 years she spent in captivity. During her imprisonment, Dugard had two children with her kidnapper, sex offender Philip Craig Garrido. J.C. Dugard's experience was a true nightmare, which is why police were shocked when she began to exhibit signs of Stockholm Syndrome after she was rescued. In a 2014 article in the Journal of Criminal Law, Senior Lecturer in Criminal Law at the University of Pretoria, Philip Stevens, describes Stockholm Syndrome as the process in which a captive, out of fear, identifies and subsequently develops an unhealthy bond with his or her captor, regardless of dangerous circumstances. Celia Jamison, a PhD student at Goldsmiths University of London, wrote in a 2010 article in the Journal for Cultural Research that many victims initially identify with their captors as a form of self-protection, hoping that such a bond will ensure their survival. Jameson says, The extreme fear elicited in the hostage gives rise to the development of what appears to be love for and attachment to the hostage taker and sympathy for the hostage taker's cause. Before further delving into the concept of Stockholm Syndrome, it is important to consider its history. In a 2007 article published in the Australian and New Zealand Journal of Psychology, Chris Cantor, a senior lecturer in psychology at the University of Queensland, and John Price, a retired psychiatrist at the South Downs Health NHS Trust, discussed the events that developed the concept of the Stockholm Syndrome. According to Price and Cantor, the term Stockholm Syndrome arose from a 1973 bank robbery in Stockholm, Sweden, during which four citizens were held hostage for several days. According to Jameson, Jan Erik Olsen, an escaped prisoner armed with a machine gun, and his former cellmate, Clark Olofsson, seized the bank on August 23, 1973, and held three women and one man for six days. During the siege, Olsen and Olofsson allowed one of the captives, Kristen Enmark, to call former Swedish Prime Minister Olaf Palmy. During the phone call, Enmark expressed to Palmy, I fully trust Clark and the robber. They have been very nice. She then further expressed that she believed Olsen was protecting she and the remaining hostages from the police. Jameson states, The details of the siege and the myths surrounding it have become a kind of shorthand for the description of a certain kind of pathological and possibly sexual reaction asking, arising out of extreme fear known as the Stockholm Syndrome or Hostage Identification Syndrome. Despite numerous myths surrounding the aftermath of the Stockholm robbery, it is reported that one of the hostages... Oddly visited Olafsson while he was in prison following the siege. The Stockholm Syndrome has little basis in contemporary authorized psychological knowledge, Jameson says. However, there are several features and conditions involved in a victim's development of Stockholm Syndrome. Stevens states, Every syndrome has symptoms or behaviors, and Stockholm Syndrome is no exception. Stevens goes on to explain several features of Stockholm Syndrome. Stephen lists positive feelings by which, by the victim toward the abuser, negative feelings of victims toward family, friends, or authorities trying to rescue them or win their release, support of the abuser's reasons and behaviors, positive feelings by the abuser toward the victim, support of behaviors by the victim at times helping the abuser, inability to engage in behaviors that may assist in the victim's release or detachment. Cantor and Price state four conditions that are in the basis of the development of the Stockholm Syndrome. They state the following conditions. Perceived threat to one's physical or psychological survival at the hands of the abuser. Perceived small kindnesses from the abuser to the victim. Isolation from perspectives other than those of the abuser and the inescapability of the situation. Victims of Stockholm Syndrome include but are not limited to victims of hostage situations. Stevens claims that the development of Stockholm Syndrome is common in victims of domestic abuse, which can explain why some victims of this type of abuse do not leave their abusers. <clears throat> According to Cantor and Price, many of these victims experience brainwashing, which is one of the several possible explanations for its Stockholm Syndrome. Moreover, brainwashing occurs when a victim is repeatedly put down and threatened until they admit their inferiority. Jameson presents the word societal Stockholm Syndrome as a more general form of the concept of this syndrome. Jameson claims that the use of the word societal implies, implies that women are susceptible to creating bonds with the male who possesses the upper hand. Furthermore, the concept of societal Stockholm Syndrome can also explain the undeniable existence of patriarchy in many parts of the world. Now that you know the gist of Stockholm Syndrome, let's look back on a few of the main ideas. 
Stockholm syndrome occurs when a victim of any kind of captivity develops a bond or an inappropriate relationship with their captor. This concept was developed after a robbery in Sweden, after which hostages exhibited behaviors associated with what is now considered Stockholm syndrome. Now, hopefully you have a better understanding of this concept. Is it possible that victims such as J.C. Dugard have no control over these inappropriate bonds? Thank you. Yay!